Microsoft has inked a cloud computing deal with GE, Satya Nadella and Jeff Immel speaking exclusively to CNBC. Let's listen in. One is allows us to go faster. So in the industrial world, this is going to be done customer by customer, country by country, having Azure's presence in a lot of different places around the world, being able to build our platform on top of that platform just allows us to go faster. I think the other thing is there's a bridge between enterprise and industrial, right, that every chief information officer is going to have to walk. So they're going to have to be comfortable more with operations technology. And I just think Can you Microsoft. Give an example of, of exactly what, sure. what kind of use. Take, people a, might not uh, take a railroad, right? They've been buying ERP systems, or they have uh, Microsoft Office in their in their offices. Now they want to do a movement planner uh, to help them schedule their locomotives. That's operations technology. It's easier for them if they have one cloud provider. It's easier for them if they are able to put Predix on top of Azure or some other network that they're more comfortable with. And, and then multiply software. that by every airline, every utility, everybody else. And this is going to be, there's going to be lots of alliances like this as time goes on. And your software is literally going to help the trains run on time and yeah, make so sure that they don't break down. What we're going to do is we're pulling data off the equipment. And what we can do is add that with use data. So we're coming at this from the asset up. Microsoft's coming at this from the enterprise across. Mm -hmm. and, and we intersect in these industrial customers. And you know, John, the difference is, is that, you know, the industrial world is done in units of one. You know, these people compete with each other, they're in different countries, and having the arms and legs that solves these problems globally is something that takes a lot of scale to provide. Microsoft has that, GE has that. Jeff, I want to ask you about globalization. You gave an interesting commencement address, and part of it, uh, you said, uh, we will produce for the U.S. in the U.S., but our exports may decline. I think you were talking about some of the protectionist policies that are springing up everywhere. At the same time, we will localize production in big end-use markets like Saudi Arabia and countries with effective export banks like Canada will be more attractive for investment. That sounds like a warning that if U.S. policies continue toward protectionism, both hiring and capital spending so, you know, are going to shift I, that I think side? Everybody looks at these trade deals and things like that to be from Microsoft or GE or big companies. We've already globalized. We have 400 factories around the world. Microsoft is in every country around the world. These trade deals help small companies, not big companies. Look, we're for the Export-Import Bank. But if there's no export-import bank, we're going to move production around the world and take advantage of export banks that are in Europe and other places. So I just think smart global companies have very smart local strategies that allow them to continue to grow while politics uh, ebb and flow in every corner of the world and allows us to serve our customers globally. And Satya, uh, we're heading into the season where we're going to have the Democratic Convention, the Republican Convention. A lot of policy uh, is going to get discussed. What are a couple of issues, I'm not going to ask you to pick a candidate, I know that's sticky, but what are a couple of issues that as a CEO of one of America's best known brands, one of the biggest businesses, you're going to be looking for uh, the, because it's going to be important for moving not just Microsoft but also your employees employees livelihoods forward it's a great question John but you know there are many issues that I talk to all the politicians on both sides of the aisle every day whether it's immigration or patent reform or trade but quite frankly right now what I'm looking for is the politics in our country to get to a place where people can win elections by making a case for both globalization and addressing the inequities that do exist in our society. Because that's where we need to get to. It can't be one versus the other. It has to be somehow how do we balance the two such that uh, we can truly have the right dialogue for the progress of our country. Because America has to be the beacon of progress of where both the inequities in our society are being addressed and at the same time we can't shut the world out. Jeff, do you see that the same way? And what kind of message do you feel like we need to hear to get at that, if so? So, John, I'd say uh, three things, really three things. Security. Uh, there's other people smarter than the two of us to, to work on geopolitics. Not many, but okay. Growth. <laughs> you know, in other words, 2% uh, GDP growth, it's not going to get it done. We've got to, we've got to have more pro-growth policies as it pertains to, look, there's 5% of the world's population in the U.S. 
25% of the world's GDP. Without globalization, that doesn't end well for a country like the United States. So pro-growth policies and then unity. You know, I, I think I think all of us want to see just more constructive dialogue that takes place uh, between business and government, uh, some of the tragedies that have taken place recently. So I, I would say I look for the, which candidate's going to provide security, growth, unity. I think I think that helps that helps most people, everybody. And Satya, when you look at the uh, more protectionist moves, as some would see them, as you look at Brexit, does that make it more expensive to do business globally? If so, who's going to end up bearing that cost? Do you have to raise prices uh, for, for your services and software in various markets? How does that play out? All right, I mean, look, it, in fact, that's the real world to me. Uh, the, uh, there are legitimate uh, digital sovereignty needs, digital security needs that companies uh, have to address uh, across the globe. Uh, in our case, for example, we operate in China under Chinese law. We even have our cloud operating in Germany under German law. Um, so we've not yet gotten to a point of equilibrium where it's friction free. But we can't expect that. Uh, so therefore, we are building Azure and the Azure infrastructure, Office 365 and Dynamics for that world. And the costs of that for sure are going to be higher than just having one data center in one part of the world you know, serve everybody. Are but it may not be tweak, realistic. Are you having to tweak those plans based on and the headlines? Fact, and yeah, I mean, more so than we already anticipated it. I would say I'm not tweaking it because of Brexit. Uh, like even take the United Kingdom. We do have data centers in the United Kingdom. Uh, we do have data centers in the Netherlands. Uh, so we've already anticipated what I would kick, say are legitimate digital sovereignty and security needs. Now, sometimes it may get more complicated, more friction laden, uh, but that I think over time will come down. But to assume the world's gonna be simple, uh, I think would be a problem uh, or a problematic assumption on, uh, for any business to make. And Jeff, I think Satya, I would just agree. You know, good global CEO knows how to manage complexity. We're in uh, 185 countries. We have 400 factories around the world. We know how to make and sell things at every corner of the world. We have local teams that we've invested in over the, over the years. But the other thing I'd say, John, is look, we're a, we're a $20 billion exporter from the United States. We're a net exporter in every, almost every country in the world. We can compete. I, I don't think we, this, this fear that, that everybody wants to put forward. Look, I understand that, that it hasn't been uh, uh, that there's been people that haven't done as well as others have as we've globalized. But the fact is, is this country is quite competitive. We have great people that work in our factories. We have great products. And so I, I, would, I would love to see more policies that would actually make our businesses more competitive, help us compete globally versus closing the door on, on globalization. There's still, in my mind, more to be gained than to be lost through globalization. And, and Jeff, um GE Capital is no longer designated effectively too right. big to fail, uh, a systemically important financial institution. Uh, that makes some people like Nelson Peltz very happy that we're pushing for GE to, to focus on its roots as an industrial company. That's going to free up some resources that you don't have to spend complying with regulation. Are, what, what's top of the laundry?